Hi, my name is Hugh. I work at the University of Oxford at Wadham College and I'm going to be talking to you briefly about admissions tests and written work. So these are a part of the application process here for Oxford and Cambridge University. This slide gives you a bit of an overview of that process. So it starts with, most importantly, picking your course, choosing a college or making an open application where we will allocate you to a college. Next important part for this session is thinking about and finding out if you need to do any assessments for the course you're applying for, so you can check that online. Make sure you hit the UCAS deadline uh, at stage four. If you're applying to Cambridge, they'll also follow up with an SAQ, some additional questions and information that they'll ask about you. Then stage six, so submitting written work, which we'll talk about later, or actually doing the test, which we're gonna focus on in this session. And then after you've done those tests, we'll decide whether to call you to interview. And then finally, we'll make that decision over the Christmas holiday and let you know in January. This session is going to focus on the admissions tests and the written work. So stage three and stage six there. And you can find out more using the link below too. I think it's important to start by thinking about why we do these tests. Why do we make you jump through an extra hoop if you're applying for Oxford and Cambridge? So I wanted to spend a bit of time talking about that. So the first one is we want students on course who have the skills that mean they're going to be able to enjoy the course and learn with us to the best of their potential. So the admissions test gives us a great opportunity to test for the skills you need to succeed on the course, whether it's critical thinking or problem solving, or maybe if you're doing a language, the ability to learn a language from scratch. That, those are skills that you need for the course. So the test gives us a chance to see if you're going to be a good fit for the course. Also, for some courses, you might need subject specific knowledge as a building block to succeed on the course. So you've got the MAT, which tests your mathematical ability, PAT, which tests your physics ability, and the BMAT for the medical courses, all building blocks that you need to be able to do well on the course. Another really important part of this is it allows us to compare candidates. So we have candidates from all over the world who apply to us, so it allows us to do one test to compare all of that applicant pool and also different students will be doing different studies even within the UK different A levels so this lets us really compare students from the UK with different academic qualifications but also internationally as well and that leads nicely into it helps us shortlisting for interview so we have far more students who apply to our courses and we're able to offer spaces. So the admissions test is a really good way of checking that you've got the skills and the subject knowledge to see if we can shortlist you for interview for someone that we might think is going to do really well here. And it helps us by giving us one bit of information about you that is beyond what your teacher prediction of your performance will be. Now, teacher predictions are great, but they can be a little bit inaccurate. A lot of students do better than their teachers predict, for example. So the test is a really good opportunity for you to shine. Now I mentioned there's quite a few different admissions tests. Here's just a slide with some of those tests. For 88% of Oxford courses, you're going to need to do at least one admissions test. So these are things like the law, test you have to do the LNAT if you're applying for English it's the ELAT or if you're applying for physics or engineering the PAT or maths the MAT you can see we weren't terribly inspired when we named these tests but I think it was worth giving you an overview of what they are now I thought I'd give you a problem to have a look at so here is a problem solving question from the TSA just pause here have a look at the question, see what you think, and you might want a pen and paper. So the answer there is C. Now, you've got a bit of an explanation at the bottom of the slide as to why the answer is C, so I won't dwell on that. I think the really interesting thing is, how did you 
do that question? How did you go about it? For example, I have to get a pen and paper and write down all of the ranges that are on option um, to get the right answer. You need to learn the best way for you to do these sorts of tests. And hopefully the other thing, if this induced a mild panic in you, don't worry. The message there is you need to practice for these tests and practice the skills you need to complete them. The logistics and registration of these tests is kind of outlined here. So it's important that you first and foremost know which test you need to do. So you can check that on UCAS, but also Oxford and Cambridge's websites to see which test you need to sit. Make sure you're aware for that because it's your responsibility to make sure that you're registered for the test in, in time. Your school will do the registration for you, but you really need to know which tests you're doing. In terms of where the tests are sat, so most of the tests are sat in uh, a school, so it might be your school if you're a registered test centre, or it might be another school in your area. The exception for this is the LNAT, which is done at different test centres that you can find out, out on the website. The other thing is the date of the admissions tests predominantly are the 4th and 5th of November. So that's a bit different from usual this year. So please check that you know the right date for your test. You've got some details there about the LNAT. All of Oxford's admissions tests are done in advance of the interviews. Now, Cambridge, some of your tests are done in advance but some are done when you actually go for the interview, so you're done at the same time. So it's really worth double checking when your test is and the registration process for it. Some tips for practicing these tests. Now these aren't earth shattering, but they are really important. So the first one to say is practice. These are tests that you can practice. I would recommend practicing at least once under timed conditions so putting yourself in a room putting the timer on and doing it in test conditions because they probably will feel a little bit different to other tests you're used to doing or have done in the past link to that be aware of what the format of the test is how long is it how many sections does it have are those sections different is the marking the same so for example the bmat each of the three sections have a different final weighting and they're also different lengths of time as well. A really practical thing to be aware of is skip questions and come back to them later. These tests are designed to be hard, not to trick you, but they are going to put you out of your comfort zone slightly. So be aware of skipping questions and coming back to them later. We're bothered about your answers and your working out, but we don't want it your answer to necessarily look beautiful, so please don't worry about scribbling all over it in terms of showing your working and your process and your thoughts for working out the answers in front of you. Also, a basic test question technique for multiple choice is eliminate the ones you know are wrong. And then, if you've got to that point where you just don't know between two, my advice would be have a guess and move on. The tests aren't negatively marked. So guess sensibly if you need to. It's amazing how many people leave questions blank on the multiple choice parts of these tests. And the last one, hopefully it's come through from the other five points, but it's really important that you prepare for these tests. The students that I know who've done well on these tests have started preparing a few, at least a month or probably two months ahead of the test. So they're used to the format of the test, the type of questions and how they're coping. The students who tend to do not so well are the ones who bury their heads in the sand a little bit and just assume it's going to be okay. These are tests that you can prepare and practice for. To reiterate that point, here's a question from the TSA now looking at critical thinking. Again, pause it, have a look. What answer do you think? And interestingly, how did you go about it? So answer there is C. I think one of the test techniques that I'd encourage you to be thinking about for this sort of question is, have a look at the paragraph. What's the main message they're trying to get across? You can see in red there that there's 
the word definition or defined three times. So a key theme of that paragraph is about definitions. So if you're thinking about what the main conclusion of the above argument is, you can kind of make a good guess that it's going to be to do with definition. And once you've eliminated the other options, you can see that the answer is C. Here's a question from the BMAT. Now the one minute 42 you've got in the corner there is how long you have per question on this section of the BMAT. So if you're feeling mean, you can put that timer up, see if you can answer in that time. Again, answer B, but the most important thing is take that message off. These are tests you can practice and be aware of the time you're taking to answer these questions as well. Thankfully, written work is a bit quicker to explain. So for some of the subjects, particularly in arts and humanities, you'll be asked to submit a couple of essays. You'll receive that request from the college that gets in touch with you from Oxford or Cambridge and normally that will happen in November after you've put in your application. I think a guiding thing there is think about your interests because the essays that you submit might form part of your interview if you're shortlisted for interview. So think about an essay that you remember what you wrote and particularly energises and engages you. The other thing to say is that work needs to have been marked as part of your standard A-level study. Um, so we will ask you information when you submit the work about how was it done? Was it done in test conditions? How much support did you get? What feedback did you get from your school? Again, giving us all of that information so we can make a reasoned comparison. And then lastly, if you've got any questions, you can contact the college that's asked for the work to kind of clarify those details if you're unsure which subjects you need to submit work from or you've got a particular issue let the college know and they'll be happy to help and there's just a link there that you can have a look at about submitting your written work now in this video we've talked about the role of admissions tests why we do them and how you prepare for them and we've also talked about written work briefly so to sum up my advice to you is make sure you know which tests to register for. I have met students who've done the wrong test by mistake. Check the alternative dates, particularly as that's different from usual this year. Get practicing. Really do spend time getting used to the format of these tests and the sorts of things that you need to know. And if you're submitting written work, select work that you're happy to talk about and really shows off your potential. Now, there's links in the bottom of the video for finding out more. I'll stop there, but if you want some more help, I'll stay on and talk you through some of the tests with specific guidance for those tests as well. But if you're leaving, thanks for watching. So if you're still around, welcome back. I'm going to start off with the BMAT, so a test you would take if you are interested in studying medicine and related courses here at Oxford and a number of other universities too. So format of this one, two hours, broken down into three sections. The first one, multiple choice questions. We had a look at those earlier in the presentation. So critical thinking and your problem solving. So the best way of preparing for those is practice those BMAT past papers, but you could also use the TSA, so thinking skills assessment, because they're a similar format for the question type that you're going to get. Section two, test your scientific knowledge. So you do need to look at an assumed knowledge guide. So this is the kind of a syllabus for this part of the test. So really important that you're brushed up on your biology, chemistry, maths and physics for this one. And you can see 27 questions in 30 minutes. So time management is vital for this section. So you really do need to practice again and be sharp on the answers. And then lastly, and bad news for some of you, if you've just been doing science subjects for the past uh, year or so, you do need to write an essay for the BMAT in section three. So there's a writing task. You have three different questions to pick from, 30 minutes to do the test. The questions themselves aren't very uh, engaging or different from year to year. So you can have a look 
uh, some past questions to give you an idea. So they're going to cover ethics, there might be a veterinary uh, question, what about current affairs, and there's normally one with a quote in that you have to respond to. A really important thing to be aware of for this one is state the basics well. You get marked for your essay and it's really easy to pick up marks if you're doing the really common sense stuff in your answers. Now a way of preparing, there'll be links for this in the bottom, but there's a very good YouTube channel for uh, a medic over in Cambridge, you've got his picture there, and he's got some brilliant resources about helping you prepare for the BMAT and your application for medicine in general. The ELAT, so the test you would sit if you're applying for one of our English related courses, one and a half hours, and it's an essay comparing two passages. So in the ELAT, you're given six different passages, all from the same theme. So uh, previously there's been six passages about storms and you do some comparison work between those two passages. Now it tests your ability for your reading skills and your response to unfamiliar texts. So the guidance from that is these are skills you'll be using at school already. So all of those skills will be relevant in helping you prepare for this, but do have a look at the marking criteria for this test that is in bullet points there. So know what you're being assessed for. Head over to the English website of the Oxford website and there's lots of resources to help you prepare for that test. The HAT, the History Aptitude Test. Now that test has changed format. So looking at past papers, you're looking at question three from old past papers, but more recently it's been reduced to one question using a primary source. And you can see there that what is being tested, all the stuff you need to be able to thrive on a history course. In terms of preparing, having a go at those and seeing the format of the test, you've also got a link there of a video of people discussing an old hat question to give you an idea of the sorts of things you might be wanting to think about. Now, LNAT, so the Law Aptitude Test, format for this one it's actually done by a different testing body to most of the other tests we do here in Oxford and that means it's actually used for a lot of other university law courses as well. So the format for this one two and a quarter hours and it's broken down into two sections so that first section multiple choice questions 95 minutes so a lot of multiple choice there and then into section B which is an essay so a choice from three You've got examples of different questions there. So messages are the same for other tests. So really practice those multiple choice, those skills of problem solving and critical thinking, and also practice writing an essay using some of the past papers. You've got resources on the LNAT website that have got those past papers and example essays and some tips. But the other advice for this test is get used to reading good quality media, so things like The Economist or The Financial Times, and pay attention to the content, but really think about taking a step back. What are the main points of the argument? What words show that? So you're practicing those critical thinking skills, particularly for multiple choice, but also when you're writing your own arguments and essays. The math, the maths admissions test. So quite a long test, this one, so two and a half hours, it's broken down into two sections. So the first section, 10 questions, four marks each, and that works out at a very nice six minutes per question. And then section two, four questions, 15 marks each, giving you 22 and a half minutes per question. So that gives you a clue straight away. The types of questions in section one are different from the types in section two. In terms of preparing for the mat, there are different things you can do. So you can practice and look at tests, uh, the mat past papers, but also other tests that are used for maths admissions. So STEP that Cambridge use, Enrich and some other maths tests are great ones to look at. Again, there's a syllabus that you can have a look at to make sure you've got all the building blocks to be able to do that test. In your answer for section two, the section is marked by 
te uh, teachers and tutors who work at Oxford and people studying here. So they will be able to look at your working out. So if you want to put words to explain your answers, that makes it far easier when they're dishing out their 15 marks, if they can see your thought processes. If you might not have got the right answer, but they can see how you've got to where you've got. And the other advice that I've pinched from James, who's the person in the slide picture there, is get strategies for the questions. So take a step back. How are you going to tackle that? The other way that you can prepare for this that I've just mentioned is my colleague from the maths department has got various YouTube videos of him going through admissions tests, talking about the answers and strategies for those tests. Really nice resource, make the most of that. The PAT, the physics aptitude test, so used in physics and engineering applications. So there's a mix of maths and physics on there. You've got some multiple choice questions as well. Advice is fairly similar to other tests, so check the syllabus. Do you have all the knowledge that you need to do the PAT? Check the format, so it changes quite a lot about whether you're allowed to use a calculator or not, or how the questions are, are dished out, so really do think about that. Write down all your working as you would in any science subject like that, so the person marking it can really see your thought processes in how you've tackled those questions and also practice problem solving skills. So great ways of doing that is looking at past papers, but you've got various different websites there. So I want to study engineering, brilliant, Isaac Physics, British Physics Olympiad, great resources that help you with that problem solving skills that you'll need. Last one we're going to talk about is the TSA. So if you're applying for philosophy, politics and economics, or a course like human sciences, TSA is an important part of that. First section is the multiple choice questions. So you've seen examples of those critical thinking and problem solving questions. And then section two, an essay. So you've got one question from four possible choices and you've got some examples there really important that you practice those multiple choice questions and when you're writing your essay that you frame your answer in response to the question. You might have heard that old adage of answer the question. That's really important for the TSA that it's clear that you're making efforts in answering the specific question you've been asked. Now my colleague over at Jesus College has done some brilliant resources taking you through preparing for the multiple choice parts of this test, but also the essay. There's a link for those in the bottom. They're a really good way of helping.